off, like I said, with some of the Apple TV 4K stuff. So the new Apple TV 4K did hit the streets. We talked about that, I think, on a previous episode of the MacCast. Apple had rolled that out or announced it. And um, yeah, just to give you a little refresh on the refresher, uh, the new Apple TV 4K has a new processor, an A15 Bionic chip, uh, four gigabytes of RAM, a new slimmer, lighter design, which I appreciate because the current Apple TV 4K, yeah, that's a beast. It's pretty pretty thick. So big difference is it looks like they were able to take out the fan, the active cooling, which allowed them to make it a little bit smaller, likely due to the fact that they have that A15 chip in there. They added support for HDR10+. Plus. This is in addition to Dolby Vision, which was previously supported. So it just expands the capabilities there. Uh, no changes really to the Siri remote in terms of form or function other than it does now offer USB-C charging instead of a lightning connector, which is kind of nice. Again, Apple standardizing on the USB-C. And then the big deal with the Apple TV 4K this time around, in addition to these kind of minor updates, is new lower pricing. So it starts at $129 US for the 64 gigabyte model. That doesn't support Thread, and we're going to talk more about Thread and Matter later in the show. So if you don't know what that is, we'll get into it in a little bit. And then uh, $149 for the 128 gigabyte model. So they hit the streets and reviews are starting to come in. I thought we'd talk a little bit about what folks are liking about the new Apple TV and uh, what maybe they don't like or just is not so great. Uh, so big thing that they seem to like is the additional performance, not necessarily groundbreaking. So if you have a current Apple TV 4K, you probably don't have to rush out and buy a new one. Um, but if you're in the market for an Apple TV, yeah, this is a great option. So a little bit snappier. It's not going to be earth shattering, but people did note that the user interface seems to move a little bit smoother, a little bit snappier. Games seem to be a little bit better, although I don't think this is going to replace any kind of dedicated gaming console or gaming PC. Obviously, it's an Apple TV, but I enjoy gaming on my Apple TV. I think it's more of a casual gaming device, but the fact that you can connect gaming controllers, including like PlayStation game controllers and Xbox game controllers to it, along with dedicated ones, does make it a nice little gaming setup if you're into kind of casual gaming, and especially if you have an Apple Arcade account, which I do. So I I do enjoy playing the occasional game on my Apple TV, and better performance, better 3D performance is always a nice thing. So those are some nice little enhancements to it. Also, everybody really liking the new price point. Yeah, it hasn't gotten us down to that sub $100 price point, which I think I'd like to see Apple get to, but they got a lot closer. And so I think, again, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, if you're all in on Apple, I think Apple TV is the way to go for your TV connectivity. Um, if you're not in that market, if you use other things, yeah, you could get away with a Roku or a Fire device, something that has the Apple TV app on it or, or the TV app. But um you know, and you may be able to save some money there. But I, I think for dedicated experience, I think Apple TV blows away the competition. I love mine. And um, yeah, we've talked about that quite a bit here. Um, some of the not so great things, people still aren't super thrilled about the Siri remote. Um, I like the new remote. I think it actually has some nice enhancements. It's a little bit larger, uh, not as easy to lose, but it is still pretty small. Uh, I only use Apple TV, so I have streaming services in Apple TV. I don't really have a dedicated cable box. I don't have live TV, so I might feel a little bit different about the remote in that scenario, especially if you want like a universal remote, but overall, I think it's good. They do note that standardizing on USB-C as the charging is nice, and uh, you know there are some kind of nice enhancements I think we were hoping that Apple would bring to the remote that haven't happened yet, specifically adding a U1 chip and find my support it'd be nice if i had a little speaker in there too just like the new airpods pro so that you could use find my to help you find the remote when you do lose it and then just overall you know many of the reviews noting that this is not an earth shattering update so again if you're already an apple tv 4k owner uh, the previous generation, you probably don't need to rush to upgrade. I, I see that kind of as a good thing, maybe. Um, but if you're looking for thread support, you're looking for, you know, a little bit slimmer design and some of these new enhancements. Yeah, 150 bucks, not too bad in terms of a price point to pick one up. 
Another thing that is coming to this, and I don't know if this factors in for a lot of people yet, but it could be, especially if you're in the market for a new television. A uh, few of the reviews noted that Apple plans to support something called quick media switching or QMS VRR that's coming with a software update later this year. What it's intended to solve is that issue with the content match for frame rates feature. So Apple has a couple features that you can do where you can have it automatically match the frame rate of the content that is playing on your Apple TV. You could also do something similar for the color space. Um, so whether it's standard definition or high, def you know, HDR or whatever, and you can switch between. But this is specifically for the frame rate switching. Currently, uh, what happens is if you're switching different frame rate levels and you have that match content uh, turned on in your settings, there's a temporary a temporary screen blackout that needs to happen when you're switching between those frame rates. This new feature will take that away, so you'll be able to not have that when you're switching different content spaces. Again, only for frame rate, not for the color thing, not for the color space thing. And it's really designed to be a future-proofing measure because as The Verge points out in their review, there aren't currently any televisions on the market that support QMS VRR. So even with the software update later this year, you're going to need a new television that actually supports this as well. And I think it's part of the new HDMI 2.1 spec. So, uh, yeah, it's coming. It's future-proofing. Another enhancement just to be aware of if you're in the market for a new Apple TV and specifically a new television set that might support that. Now, one other feature related to Apple TV that was uh, rolled out this week that you might not be excited about, I'm not that excited about it, to be honest, is that Apple seems to have moved... Up next, which is, in my opinion, one of the best features of the Apple TV, you know, that's the thing that as you're watching shows and programs, they keep track of it. Apple will uh, allow you to add things into your Up Next queue. And so when you go to the TV app, regardless of your device, you can see what you've been recently watching. If there's additional episodes available, it'll offer those up to you. And that was always in the top row of the Apple TV app interface. Well, Apple has apparently decided to move that up next to the second row and have added a new featured content as the first, first row. And this is something that a lot of apps do, but Apple's using it to feature their Apple TV content. And the change supposedly has happened in the tvOS, iOS, iPadOS, and Mac OS. Originally, it was thought that it was coming in the next betas, but several people have noted, and I can kind of confirm this on my Mac, that the change seems to be rolled out on the server side. And so it's a little bit annoying because, you know, Apple was always a, a big advantage of, in my mind, of the Apple TV app was that it was focused on you and your content and your content discovery rather than Apple just kind of shilling their own programs right at the top of the uh, of the interface. And so, yeah, you know, up next is still there, but it's now below the fold. It's kind of second tier citizen. And I really hope that Apple hears the feedback from the community because a lot of people are, you know, rallying against this. So I would encourage you to send feedback to, uh, you know, apple.com slash feedback and tell them, hey, we don't like this. Let's bring back up next or maybe at least give us the option to say, hey, I want this more focused on my content and I want control over my TV interface and what I'm seeing here. You know, I think this is a bad move on Apple's part. I get that they want to promote their own programming. And, you know, I'm a big fan of Apple TV Plus, and I think they have great shows and great content. But, yeah, let me pick that. Let me decide what I want to see. And uh, let me be in control of that. It, again, it was one of the, the things that I think was distinctly, you know, Apple thinking differently like they do. And now they seem to be falling into the trap of some of their other streaming competitors and yeah, frankly, I don't like it if you can't tell. So just something to be aware of. And again, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this change. But more importantly, tell Apple how you feel about this change. And then one other thing that we've been talking about quite a bit is Apple's uh, push into doing more advertising. And I think you might be aware, we talked about this on a, a recent podcast, that Apple has a new partnership with Major League Soccer they're going to be rolling out Major League Soccer to Apple TV Plus in 2023. And it looks like they have a new ad network planned 
to support a lot of their efforts with MLS soccer and also their other advertising efforts. This is according to Bloomberg. Apple's going to start streaming MLS games on Apple TV Plus in February, and reportedly they're in discussions now with advertising partners to help support that. It sounds like Apple plans to offer kind of three tiers of MLS. 